In business news, the latest data from the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries reveals that average daily crude oil production rose marginally to 1.27 million barrels per day in June. That's in Nigeria. This marks a surge of 25,000 barrels per day from 1.25 million barrels per day recorded in May. Meanwhile, the second resources placed average daily production in June, which stands at 1.36 million barrels per day, a decrease of 10,000 barrels compared to May figure of 1.3 372 million barrels per day. Despite the decline in production, Nigeria maintained its status as Africa's largest oil producer, followed by Libya, uh, which produced 1.2 million barrels per day. Uh, the average crude oil production of 1.27 million barrels per day in June indicates that for the first half of 2024, Nigeria has consistently fallen short of its OPEC production quota of 1.5 million barrels per day and its budget target of 1.78 million barrels per day. Meanwhile, the Executive Secretary and Chief Executive Officer of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria, Dr. Rabi Oluwo, says the adoption of the roadmap on sustainability and financial reporting standards in the country has set an exemplary standard for other African countries to follow, and it's ready to assist them in, it, in this regard. The FRSE boss said this at the opening, uh, in his opening remarks at a practical workshop on the implementation of ISBs, IFRS, and IFRS S2 by financial institutions in which he held in Abuja. He said sustainability is at the center piece of human existence and when adopted by financial institutions will bring about better decision making, access to capital, improve employee engagement, uh, which in turn impacts on the nation's economy. Based on the efforts of the Financial Reporting Council and indeed all the stakeholders, Nigeria has become a reference point for best practice and much sought after to assist other African countries in this journey. We are delighted to know that we have two banks, two banks among the financial institutions that have early adopted the ISSB sustainability standards. We therefore look forward to having more of our financial institutions join this train this year and not to wait till the mandatory year. When you report accurately, it will expose your corrupt practices. And if you don't report accurately, when you hide information, when you either in terms of profit, in terms of inflating expenses, in terms of omitting critical um, economic activities, that stems um, corruption. But when you have a regulatory agency like FRC, like Office of the Auditor General for the Federation, and all of them work together. Um, the financial reports, when properly examined, we throw out some corrupt practices. In order to ensure that the right things are done, that's where reporting comes in. So that the regulators will be sure that the right things have been done by the corporates. And then it could also serve as an opportunity to do peer review. If you are doing it right, if I'm not doing it right, we can all come together to gather like this and explain encourage ourselves so that tomorrow this one will not go uh, overboard and then we would have no world to live. To strengthen Nigeria's financial sector, the Central Bank of Nigeria has insisted that banks must increase their minimum pay in common equities capital to a specified amount. Analysts' reactions have trailed this development. Some say it will help increase loans and advances. Well, my managing editor, chief economist at ProShare, Mr. Teslim Shitabe, who spoke to us earlier today on Business Nigeria, shares his views on the implications of this in, in development. The financial system is quite stable. However, it is important to note that um, researchers at ProShare believe that it is necessary for the CBN to engage in some amount of interventions where you have some smaller, soft institutions that need um, support. And I'll, I'll bring that to the point of what you said, Heritage Bank. Earlier you referred to Heritage Bank. Yes, so we don't want another Heritage Bank on our plate. So the smaller banks, some of which the CBN has taken under custodial guidance, these banks need to find a way of increasing their equity capital. It is either that they, on their own, enter into combinations that will enable them scale up, quickly scale up, within a period of two years, quickly scale up their equity, or the best bet will be, hopefully, 
getting an arrangement where banks come together, but these banks are not strange bedfellows. Because the fear is that you could merge banks, but they are strange bedfellows, different cultures, different personalities, and you create a whole new monster. Yeah, yeah. So you want to avoid creating a whole new monster. So preferably, we'd want to see a situation where these banks, currently under custodial guidance of the CBN, come together, agree, develop a plan, and then scale up. The federal government has renewed commitments to using investments in green projects to enhance the development and health of the people. At the launch of the NGX Impact Bird in Lagos, stakeholders committed to cleaner environment. I Fenga Cup reports. The Nigerian government, through its Ministry of Environment, in association with stakeholders in the capital market, commits to investing in green projects for growth and development. Launching the NGX Impact Board in Lagos, Minister of Environment stressed government's efforts to reduce effects of flood, desertification, and erosion on the environment. But I also feel that there's also building enough where I understand in this aspect of building enough because uh, it's a dry area that we have to work in. But because the location is building right for the flood, the only one that comes there is very devastated. So we have many issues that we need funding for. Securities and Exchange Commission coordinating and supervising green movement ensures compliance to environment safety standards and innovations. As a government official and also as a regulator of the market. So, so on the SEC, we are making our presence felt. We will be there every way, every day, and leading the game. This is a platform that we have not only for the green bond, but all the sustainability initiatives, all the SDGs, so that we can all be on the same level. So the financing that they require, and like way you said, any other ministry, any other state government, we are now launching that platform, that portal on the NDS. In 2019, the Nigerian government had introduced the Pioneer Green Bond Investments into the stock markets. In the NGX in collaboration with the Federal Ministry of Environment, uh, is working together with issuers to see how they can raise capital in the form of sovereign uh, green bonds uh, to finance some of those initiatives that the Federal Ministry of Environment is trying to pursue, in line with, I think, the current, current government's agenda of sustainability. It is expected that a groundbreaking green bond insurance will come into the capital markets in September. Meanwhile, the stock market closed flat, throwing weak indices against some banks. The value of trade showed 11 billion naira. If young Echo TVC News, Lagos. Crude oil prices dipped today as the impact of Hurricane Beryl dissipated and impact inflation data heightened uh, so stubbornly weak consumer demand in the top. Crude oil, West uh, Texas intermediate crude rose to sell at $81.78 per barrel. Brent also experienced an upward price margin of 0 0.35, selling at $84.96. Bonnie Light fell to sell at $86, down 0.72%. OPEC basket is down 1.52%, selling at $86.81.